Namaskar. Good evening to all of our viewers, wherever they are. Myself, Gyanalok Mahanti, General Secretary Adivakta Parishad Odisha, welcome all of you in this lecture series, which is dedicated to one of the great legend of legal fraternity, Dr. Bipin Bihari Rakhto, who is who was at a time freedom fighter, social worker, and designated senior advocate of Orissa High Court. In this pandemic situation, in order to utilize the negative atmosphere, we have decided that we will take it as an opportunity to have a lecture series in the name of late Dr. Bipin Bihari Rotho. And accordingly, we have decided that the lecture series, which, are, which is going to start today, we have chosen a topic that is art of cross-examination. Today, the keynote speaker is Sri Sorochandra Mahapatra, who is very well-known criminal lawyer of Odisha. As we know that the Odisha, in Odisha, all over, all over the bars, messengers, everybody knows Mr. Mahapatra. And today, we will pay homage to Dr. Bipin Bihari Ratha, who has passed away recently for that. Today, in tribute of late Dr. Bipin Bihari Ratha, the lifestyle, the life story of Dr. Ratha that will be Dr. Ratha was a legal was a legal luminary. About him, that enlightenment will be given by Sri Anup Kumar Bose, Learned Assistant Solicitor General of India of Odisha High Court. Now, before we start the, before I invite Sri Anup Kumar Bose. Learned Assistant Secretary General to tell something about Dr. Ratho. I would like to inform all the viewers that especially we have developed this channel because the people of Odisha should know or should learn some learn the legal topics, different legal topics from our legal experts. Say pari prakire, amaro Odia or English, duiti misai ki amaro ita koriya pe ame chesta korchu. Bhartaman mu onrod koruchi amaro learned assistant solicitor general of India Orissa High Court, Sri Anup Kumar Bose Mahodayinku say amar jo great legal luminary thile Dr. Bipin Bai Ratha tanko bisare amuku dui pada koi. Over to you, sir. Anu, sir. Dear friends and all other my colleagues and Soro Babu, who is the main speaker, and other legal luminaries who are hearing this throughout the country, I have to say something about let Sri Bipin be a But I have decided to speak in the own language in Oriya. The most of whatever is contribution and it should go to the lower level, up to the bar level in the district level. And so many lawyers are also watching this program throughout. Apart from that, 
some other person who are also interested in the life of Bipin Ratha. There also I was told that hearing this program. <laughs> विपिन बिहारी रथ जण अत्यंत क्षण जन्म पुरुष बोली धरा जे आपण माने अनेक समस्ते ताको विषय रे वे तो समस्त ताकर जीवन रो जो क्रम विकास भीतर बल बारे जाडी न थिन मो मध्ये तांको जिबा परे अनेक कथा जानली जदिबा तांको थिबा समय रे ताको सहित व्यक्तिगत भाबरे अत्यंत संपर्कित बहुत तरह देखा था क्या तथा बर्ताव बहुत ही थी एवं बहुत के चीज उपदेश से दे चलते के बड़ा लॉयर इस बारे तक करना ना थी लाइन तीनों के जाना समाज से भी थी तक कर समाज प्रत्येक अवधान मध्य जत्थेस्ट होती करते हैं विपिन बेर रत्न करो जन्मो उन्हें सब पौड़िया रही थी उन्हें सब तिरिस रही तला। उन्हें सब तिरिस रो ताकर ध्यान तो है ला सात तीन। प्राय नब्बे वर्षों बाद सब पूरी नहीं तला। एवं शेय अवस्था ताकर ध्यान तो है ला। अब पूरा जीवन जाकर जरी देखा जाए तंकर। विभिन्न प्रकार रो ताकर जहाज़ से कोरी जाई चुकी। जेटा अत्यंत प्रगणा दे। अपना मन कहीं विश्वास क जे श्री विपिन रथ 10 वर्ष वयस रे बानर सेना रो सभ्य हेले 10 वर्ष वयस किछि न बानर सेना से तबे महात्मा गांधी कर जो आंदोलन चलीतिला स्वराज्य आंदोलन से पई कि पूरा देश रे गुटे बानर सेना बोली गठन करा 10 वर्ष वयस रे एभली गुटे सेना रे जाई केना भाग न आउ से जगह रे निजो को एक्टिव करिवा एटा अत्यंत ताकर देश भक्ति रो परिचय दे पिला बड़ कि 1940 मसिया रे 30 रे जन्म हिची कर आमे जो लेक्चर सीरीज करू जो एटा तत्परि ना रे समर्पित एवं गोटिए केवल आज जो होती ता न आउरी मध्य एटा सीरीज हबो तांको ना रे आ हमरो भाग्य बल जाबे बहुत अल्प समय भितरे ताको स्मरण करू जो ताको देह तो पर 1940 तिले ब्रिटिश असमान कथा तापर 12 वर्ष वयस रे 1942 रे क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट हला भारत छाड़ आंदोलन हला सेते बेले मध्य से क्षेत्रे जोग देले सेते बेले बाल्यो माइनर एकना से थिले से एवं से महात्मा गांधी कर संपर्क करे दुई थर आस्तंति भलो आबे महात्मा गांधी कर प्रार्थना सभा चारियाडे थिले पूरा देश रे स्वराज्य आंदोलन रो जो गोटे प्रकार रो चेतना सृष्टि हला देश रे अग्रणी भूमिका रे महात्मा गांधी गुटे थिले ताको सहित मध्ये रही से सही समय रे कार्य करले एवं अभिभक्त गंजाम जिल्ला रे जन्म हिति पर चठेकार ए बाल्य अवस्था रे चटार से आंदोलन रे निज को शामिल करले ता परे धीरे धीरे से अगर पढा जते बड़ सरिला कलिकोट कॉलेज क्षेत्र पढिला एवं मरुसतन लॉ कॉलेज रो पास कला परे ता परे से जोग देले तने प्लीडर है केना एवं से 1955 मसिया रे किंतु ता परे सेते बड़ एडवोकेट एक्ट रे एडवोकेट बार गोटे विधि थला 1961 रु जे ओकिलाती एडवोकेट हिसाब रे परिगणित रे विपिन अंकर एही सब कथा मु जो कहू छी एगुडी को ताकर जीवन रो 
ଆଇନରେ ବି ହିସାବରେ ସେ ଯାହା କହିଥିଲେ ବା କରୁଥିଲେ ତା ଛଡା ତାଙ୍କର ସାମାଜିକ କାର୍ଯ୍ୟର ଯାହା ବିବରଣୀ ସେଟା ବେଶୀ ଆକର୍ଷିତ କରିବ ସମସ୍ତଙ୍କୁ ସେ କିନ୍ତୁ ଆଇନରେ ବି ହିସାବରେ ଯାହା କିଛି କଲେ ବହୁ ବହୁ ସଂସ୍ଥାର ସେ ଓକିଲ ଥିଲେ ସେ ବିଷୟରେ ମୁଁ ତାଙ୍କର ବିଜ୍ଞତା ସେ କିଭଳି ଭଲ ଓକିଲ ଥିଲେ ସେସବୁ ବିଷୟରେ ମୁଁ ବିଶେଷ କହିବା ପାଇଁ ଚାହୁଁନି କାରଣ ସମସ୍ତେ ଏଟା ଜାଣିଛନ୍ତି ଯେ ସେ କେମିତି ତାଙ୍କର ମକଦମା ପରିଚାଳନା କରୁଥିଲେ କିନ୍ତୁ ସେ ଗୋଟେ କଥା ମୋତେ କହିଥିଲେ ଯେ ଦେଖ ମୋତେ ସେ ନାଁ ଧରି ଏକ ନାମରେ ଡାକୁଥିଲେ ଦେଖ ଅନେଷ୍ଟି ସିନସିଅରିଟି ଆଣ୍ଡ ଡିଭୋସନ ସିଏ ଏଇଟା କହୁଥିଲେ ମୋତେ ଯେ ତିନିଟା ଜିନିଷ ଓକିଲାତିର ହେଉଛି ବିଜମନ୍ତ ଗୋଟେ ହେଉଛି ଅନେଷ୍ଟି ଆଉ ଗୋଟେ ହେଉଛି ସିନସିଅରିଟି ଆଉ ଗୋଟେ ଡିଭୋସନ କାମ ପ୍ରତି ସବୁ କିନ୍ତୁ ସେ ଏକଥା ବି କହୁଥିଲେ ମୋତେ ଯେ ନଲେଜ ଯେଉଁ ଅଛି ଏଇଟା ତାପରେ ନଲେଜ କ୍ୟାନ ବି ଆକ୍ୱାର୍ଡ ଏଇଟା ସେ କହୁଥିଲେ ନଲେଜ ତ ହବ ପଢ଼ିଲେ ହବ ଯେ ଅଧ୍ୟବସାୟ କରିବ ସେ ନିଶ୍ଚୟ ଜାଣିପାରିବ କିନ୍ତୁ ବେଶୀ କ୍ୟାରେକ୍ଟର ଇସ୍ୟୁରେ ଏଇ ତିନିଟା ଜିନିଷ ଅଛି ସିନସିଅର ହବ ଜଣେ ପୁରା ଯିଏ ଥିବ ଯାହା ପାଇଁ ପକ୍ଷ ସିଏ ହେଉଛି ମୋର ଗୋଟିଏ ପକ୍ଷ ତାର ପାଇଁ କି କାମ ମୁଁ ପୁରା କରିବି ଡିଭୋଟେଡ ହେଇ କରିବି ଆଉ ସିନସିଅର ହେଇକି ନା କରିବି ଏଇଟା ବିପି ରାଙ୍କର ଯିଏ ଦେଖିଥିବେ କେସ୍ ପରିଚାଳନା କେମିତି କରୁଥିଲେ ବା କେମିତି ପ୍ରିପାରେସନ ହଉଥିଲେ କେଉଁ କେଉଁ କେସ୍ରେ ଏଇଟା ସମସ୍ତେ ନିଶ୍ଚିତ ଭାବରେ ଅଙ୍ଗେ ଅଙ୍ଗେ ଲିଭଉଥିବ ଓଡ଼ିଶା ହାଇକୋର୍ଟର ବାର ଅସେସନରେ ଦୁଇ ଦୁଇ ଥର ସେ ସଭାପତି ହେଲେ ନିର୍ବାଚିତ ହେଇ ଆଉ ଛୟାନବେରୁ ଦୁଇ ହଜାର ଚଉରାନବେରୁ ଅଠାନବେ ପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ସେ ରହିଲେ ସଭାପତି ଆଉ ସଭାପତି ସମୟରେ ତାଙ୍କର ବିଶେଷ ଯେଉଁ କାର୍ଯ୍ୟ ଗୁଡ଼ିକ ଥିଲା ଆପଣମାନେ ଜାଣିଥିବେ ଯେ ସିଏ ଗୋଟେ ଫାଉଣ୍ଡେସନ ଯେଉଁ ଟ୍ରଷ୍ଟ ହେଇଛି ଆମର ଲୟର୍ସ ମାନଙ୍କର ସିଏ ଟ୍ରଷ୍ଟଟା ତାଙ୍କର ପାଇଁ ହେଇଛି ଯେଉଁଥିରେ କି ୱେଲଫେୟାର ଟ୍ରଷ୍ଟ ଗୋଟେ କରାଯାଇଛି ତେଣୁ ତାଙ୍କ ଭିତରେ ସବୁ ଚିନ୍ତାଧାର ଥିଲା ନୂଆ ନୂଆ ଭାବରେ କିପରି କରାଯିବ ଆଉ ସେ ବହୁ ବହୁ ସଂସ୍ଥାରେ ଯେଭଳି ଭାବରେ ରହିକିନା କାମ କରୁଥିଲେ ସେଥିରେ କିଛିଟା ସଂସ୍ଥା ଆପଣ ଜାଣିବା ଦରକାର ସେ ଲାଇଫ ମେମ୍ବର ଥିଲେ ଉତ୍କଳ ସାହିତ୍ୟ ସମିତି ଲାଇଫ ମେମ୍ବର ଥିଲେ ଆପଣଙ୍କର ଉତ୍କଳ ସମ୍ମିଳନୀର ଫାଉଣ୍ଡର ଥିଲେ ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ଅଫ ଓଡ଼ିଶା ସାଂସ୍କ୍ରିଟ ମହାସଂଘ ବୋଲି ଗୋଟେ ସେ କରିଥିଲେ ଫାଉଣ୍ଡର ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ସାଂସ୍କ୍ରିଟ ମହାସଂଘ ବୋଲି ତାଙ୍କର ମନେ ହେଲା ଯେ ଏଇଟା କରିବା ଦରକାର ସମାଜର ଗୋଟେ ପରମାନେଣ୍ଟ ଆଡଭାଇଜର ସେ ଥିଲେ ଏପରି ହିସାବରେ ଏବଂ ସେ ଆମର ଉଣେଇଶହ ନବେରୁ ପଞ୍ଚାନବେ ସିଏ ବିଜେପିର ଭାଇସ୍ ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ଥିଲେ ଭାରତୀୟ ଜନତା ପାର୍ଟିର ଭାଇସ୍ ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ଆଉ ନ୍ୟାସନାଲ କାଉନସିଲ ମେମ୍ବର ମଧ୍ୟ ଥିଲେ ଥରେ ଲୋକସଭାକୁ ସେ ଛିଡା ହେଇଥିଲେ ଆଉ ସେ ସମୟରେ ବରହମପୁର ଲୋକସଭା ନିର୍ବାଚନରେ ସେ ଛିଡା ହେଲେ ଯେଉଁ ସମୟରେ ଏକାନବେ ମସିହା ବେଳେ ସେ ଯେଉଁ ଲୋକସଭା ନିର୍ବାଚନରେ ଛିଡା ହେଲେ ସେଥିରେ ସେ ବାସ୍ତବରେ ବିଜେପିର ଭିତ୍ତିପ୍ରସ୍ତର ସେଇ ସ୍ଥାପନ କରିଥିଲେ ଏବଂ ତାପରେ କେବଳ ସେ ପଟରେ ଯେଉଁ କାମ ଥିଲା ସେଠି ହେଲା ଆଉ ସେ ଆରମ୍ଭ କଲେ ଆଉ ସେ କେବେ ପ୍ରସ୍ତାବ ହେଉନଥିଲେ କୌଣସି ଆଡଭର୍ ସିଚୁଏସନ ହେଲେ ଆଉ ସବୁବେଳେ ତାଙ୍କର ଯେଉଁ କାର୍ଯ୍ୟ ଭଳି ଦେଖାଯାଉଛି ସେଗୁଡ଼ିକ ସବୁବେଳେ ପ୍ରେରଣା ଦେଇଥିଲା କୌଣସି ଆଡଭର୍ ସିଚୁଏସନ ମଧ୍ୟ ସମସ୍ତେ ଏକାଠି କରି ତାଙ୍କ ଭିତରେ ଗୋଟେ ପ୍ରେରଣା ଜାଗ୍ରତ କରିବା ଏଇଟା ବିପିନଙ୍କର ଭିତରେ ବିଶେଷ ଆମେ ଦେଖିଛୁ ଶ୍ରୀ ବିପିନ ବିହାରୀ ରଥ ୱାର୍କିଂ ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ଆଉ ପ୍ରେସିଡେଣ୍ଟ ଥିଲେ ବିଶ୍ୱ ହିନ୍ଦୁ ପରିଷଦ ଓଡ଼ିଶାର ଉଣେଇଶହ ଅନେଶ୍ୱତରୁ ଦୁଇଶହ ଦୁଇ ହଜାର ଦଶ ପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ଗୋଟେ ଲମ୍ବା ସମୟ ପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ସେ ଥିଲେ ଏବଂ ଫ୍ରିଡମ ଯେଉଁ ଫାଇଟର ଷ୍ଟେଟ ଗଭର୍ଣ୍ଣମେଣ୍ଟ ଗୋଟେ କରିଥିଲେ ସେ ତାକୁ ଅନର କରିଦିଅନ୍ତି କରିଥିଲେ ସେଥିରେ ଫ୍ରିଡମ ଫାଇଟର୍ସ ମାନଙ୍କ ଦ୍ୱାରା ଯେଉଁଟା ଫ୍ରିଡମ ଫାଇଟର ମାନଙ୍କୁ ଯେଉଁ କରାହେଇଥିଲା ଏଭଳି ବହୁ କିଛି କାର୍ଯ୍ୟକ୍ରମ ଭିତରେ ସେ ନିଜକୁ ସଂଶିକ୍ତ କରିଥିଲେ ଅନେକ ପ୍ରକାରର ସାହିତ୍ୟ କାମ ଭିତରେ ସାମାଜିକ କାମ ଭିତରେ ଆଉ ଆଇନଜୀବୀ ମାନଙ୍କ ପାଇଁ ସେ ଯାହା କରିଯାଇଛନ୍ତି ଆଉ ୱେଲଫେୟାର ଟ୍ରଷ୍ଟ ଫଣ୍ଡରୁ ଆମେମାନେ ଯାହା
आउ खाली ओकेलाते करिकना रोजगार करले आसेले ये भितरो आमुको एया शिक्षा करिवार छे ए प्रोफेशन करिकना ओकेलाते करिकना मध्ये आमरो समाज प्रति जहा जाके जे दायित्व रो ताको मध्ये परिवहन करबा पय की भगवान आमको सेमती प्रेरणा बा शक्ति देई चंती उ सेतरे खाली गोटिया कथा कहिकना मोर कर्तव्य को शेष करबी एटा बहुत खुशीर दिन श्री विपिन रथ को आमे एते जल्दी भी अध्य स्मरण कर जिबा परे भलो दिन कि भाई एते कोरे अन राजा शक्ति दै थांदे ए बोले महापुरुष मानो से शक्तिता समस्त आमे जे समान नथिले मत्य एटा करले मध्यवसाय बोले रे एई बोले जने हेई पाइबो मध्यवसाय बोले रे स्थापित करि पाइबो तनु एई कथा कहि मु एति के अपन मान को समस्त अनुरोध कर दे आमे या परे जो लेक्चर सीरीज गुडा को ताको नार मते करा दिबो ए गुडी को आहुरी सुदूर प्रसारी आ केमति भाबे एजुकेटिव भाबे रहबो किंतु ता संगे आमर गोटे टाइम रहबो जे आमर सोशल ड्यूटी आ रेस्पोंसिबिलिटी ता सर अटैच करिके आमे केवल प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स मन नै करा ताको आहुरी ब्रॉड नै करा आमे दिबो एआई मु आशा रखि आमर समाज प्रति जहा जा के जागृति करबो आ आमे एथिक्स मन नै करा ताको आहुरी ब्रॉड नै करा आमे दिबो एआई मु आशा रखि आ श्री विपिन बिहार रसंग प्रति मोर श्रद्धांजलि एवं ताको प्रति मोर जार भक्ति प्रेरणा कर श्री सौरचंद्र महापात्र मुद विषय श्री सौरचंद्र महापात्र उसीवस्था आरंभ कर बहुत अल्प समय मध्य क्रिमिनाल लयर जो पिक स्टेज सेंसेशनल मैटर डिफेंस बोथ साइड से प्रोसिक्यूशन लिकर ट्रेजेडी जो कटक प्रसिक्यूशन भी कनविक्शन भद्रक एल आई सी जो अफिसर डकैती एंड मर्डर बिहार रू आसिका प्रसिक्यूशन स्टेट रू स्पेश प्रसिक्यूटर होते भी कनविक्शन डिफेन्स कथ तो कहले असरती हम डिफेन्स नाई सब कंधमाल नन रेप टू आरंभ कर बहुत बड़ बड़ केस जो क्लाइंट को ना दी आज टपिक क्रस एक्जाम आर्ट अफ क्रस एक्जामेसन जो आर्ट अफ क्रस एक्जामेसन कर सत्य को बाहर को आदि आर्ट अफ क्रस एक्जामेसन ठीक ना ट्रायल कोर्ट गोटे जगह जो याए के ट्रायल कोर्ट रे ठीक के ऊपर हाईकोर्ट सुप्रीमकोर्ट जो जानते भी से केस रही मूल्य ना से केस तेणु क्रस एक्जामेसन जो ठीक ना तार आर्ट ठीक न कराला ताले आपन जानिवे जे केस रे रिजल्ट भी ठीक होबनी आ आमे जथोचित ना हम क्लाइंट को देई परियो सेति पय आज ए बडी टॉपिक रे श्री सौरचंद्र महापात्र आबो गोंड उपस्थित छथिन तांको मन अनुरोध करू छी से आजिर रो... नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी व्यूअर्स आई heartily congratulate gyan babu at huge vs this program has been arranged and i can reach to you through this information and technology medium my respected elder brother anudha who spoke few words regarding the personality of let bipin bihar ratho in whose memory this law lecturer has been initiated all my elders and brothers and sisters and the persons who are 
interested in this law matters particularly the art of cross examination i welcome all of you and i try to explain the basic fundamental art relating to cross examination before that i respectfully submit here that in the trial courts both civil and criminal courts the evidence is being collected by two ways one is by oral evidence the other is documentary evidence and so far the parties are concerned they have statutory right to cross examine the witness of the adverse party since parties are not well about the legal practice law and procedure to facilitate for better result and to arrive at the just conclusion of the trial a device was invented and a class of people was authorized under law to represent the litigants in the court of law and those persons are known as legal professionals that means now we are calling after the advocates act they are designated as advocates in this context i will first invite all of you to understand what is the profession profession is nothing but a service to a individual or to a group of individuals or to the nation and a professional perfection can be only acquired by both ways that is it needs education on the subject concern and training that's why if a person will be well educated regarding the profession who which he adopts he is to become more confident in his subject the training is otherwise also necessary it and its salient feature is to bring out the talent which is within the professional itself so combination of education with training makes a man perfect professional unfortunately the legal profession which we are practicing in the court of law there is no process of adequate training and due to lack of training a ancient method is being carried out till today the method is that after enrollment a person is to attend the chamber of a senior and by virtue of attending the chamber he is to go through the brief and acquainted with the fact and circumstances including the law and was the performance of his senior more particularly when the senior used to cross examine the witness of the adverse side so by this process that means the process of observation and experiment the training is being imparted to the lawyers thereby making them proficient and efficient cross examiner in this regard i have a personal view that in respect of all other professions apart from the education training is being imparted now the society has been changed the human nature has been changed and it sector has been developed in this premises i think that at this stage all should think over regarding the appropriate training to build up the lawyer community more particularly trained up to cross examination what i noticed throughout the state of orissa i found that in most of the courts the cross examining lawyers are diminishing day by day and the youngsters they are not interested because it is a very difficult task and due to lack of interest or training they are not becoming the better cross examination lawyer in view of this background i think that if this quality will go down and down a day will come that the justice system will become soft and substantially lower 
and appropriate justice will not be delivered to the people. So in this regard, I have a personal request to all of the viewers and the government also and the members of the legal fraternity that we should think that how training can be imparted to the young lawyers, thereby they will be able to serve the nation by giving justice to the people. In this context, in this context, I would like to say that nowadays in law colleges and law courses, there are some courses has been adopted just like mood court, uh, mood trials, and also the students are being asked to attend the chamber and the court. These three processes, to my considered view, is not sufficient to make to a person sufficient to handle a case at the initial stage. So for the purpose and for the topic itself, I say that a curriculum should be evaluated, government should come forward, and the young lawyer should be trained accordingly. And this one of the topics in the curriculum of training should be out of cross-examination. Now, the statutory provisions as it envisages says that commencing from Constitution Article 21, 22, and Article 39A, along with Section 137 of the Evidence Act, and the procedural law, that is, CPC and CRPC, NB says authorizing a party to be represented in the court of law through a legal professional and conduct his case. If the, this is the situation, and at present we are providing training to the judicial officers who are holding trial courts and providing training to the public prosecutors and the prosecuting agency who are defending the government, why the government is not considering this aspect and imparting training to the budding lawyers, thereby they will be, be become self-sufficient to handle the cases of the litigants with confidence. In view of this background, I also further like to bring to a kind notice of my viewers that the legal profession itself is a very challenging and very de delicate profession. So a legal professional not only be well aware about the law or sufficiently educated in his subject matter, he should be well trained to handle a case and see that justice should be done. In this context, I will say that a moral boost should be given to the legal practitioner, thereby to make a, such a person, he can very well cross-examine a witness, and for that purpose, he must be much thoughtful, he must be a good planner, and he must possess powerful memory. Now, we have passed duty on a lawyer to perform five duties. I classified those duties, that is, I can say 5C. First duty of a lawyer is duty towards the country. Second duty of a lawyer is the duty towards the community. The third duty of the lawyer is towards the duty towards his client. The fourth duty is the duty towards the court, being the officers of the court. And the fifth duty is duty towards his colleague. These five duties are, I can say, are the straight lines and they are parallel to each other. And it is the lawyer who can mend those five straight lines and bring it to one point, that is point of justice. So only send a until a lawyer is being properly educated and properly trained, then the justice system will be frustrated. 
Now, so far the cross examination is concerned. Our topic today's topic, cross examination is a very difficult and complicated process, and the cross examination itself consists of two parts. One part is cross examination is a science in its juristic aspect. Cross examination is also an art in the achievement of legal results. So it is a combination of science and art. The next step is why and what for the cross examination is necessary. The cross examination is necessary on the point of view of three. It consists of three fold. First point to achieve by way of cross examination is to elicit something in the favor of your client. The second point is weaken the force of what the witness has said against your client. The third one is to show from the present demonior and from the past life of the witness, bringing out that the witness is unworthy of belief and thereby destroy the effect of his testimony. That means the three ways which I like to explain here that you can bring out by way of cross examination, which will go in favor of your client, or you can weaken the evidence which has been defeated by your opponent's witness, thereby the evidence will not be taken into consideration or it can be ignored. The third thing is the you can make the witness source that court will not pose any reliance or believe the such evidence. So this is the purpose of cross-examination, to weaken the evidence of the opponent side. Now, to prepare yourself for cross-examination, two basic aspects are paramountly necessary. One is preparation. The second one is integration or actual performance by way of cross exemption in the court. How to prepare? The prepare based on five basic points. First is minute and independent study of the brief. The brief which you use to handle, you have to study it very mind, mindfully, minutely, and independently. Then you have to study the law relating to the case. That means the laws involved in that case, you must be aware about those laws. Thereafter, you have to study the judgment laws of the High Court or Supreme Court, which consists of two parts. One part is the factual aspect, that is appreciation of evidence, which is relevant under Section 3 of the Evidence Act. And other aspect is the legal aspect which has been dealt in the judgment. So far the cross exemption is concerned, you can get some sort of reference, some sort of help by reading the factual aspect, why the court accepted the evidence of a particular witness, why the court rejected the evidence of the particular witness, and what was the cross exemption which has been put to the witness, and what are the answer for which the court failed to give any reliance to such evidence. So by this way, by three steps, you will prepare yourself. It is your endeavor, and it is a part of the preparation. The fourth part of preparation is consultation with the client regarding the case. This is a very most important thing, because you do not know who are the witnesses, and what is their nature, character, why they come forward to you depose in favor of a party. So you have to make a de detailed discussion with the client, thereby derived information. And that was the basis of preparation for yourself to put forth the questions in order to demolish the evidence of that witnesses. Apart from that, the cross examiners, examiners should study the law of evidence and more particularly the Evidence Act in Chapter 9 which dealt from section 118 to 165, and the chapter heading is of witnesses. That was gives a concrete idea, what will be your the question, 
to what extent you can cross examine the witnesses and what action objection may arise all the things regarding the admissibility of the evidence all the things will arise and you have to get hard those provisions apart from the other provisions in the evidence act itself unless you make yourself ready you cannot be a able cross examiner or you cannot give relief to your client at the time of preparation there are two types of cases as i stated civil cases civil case basically based on pleadings that is a plain written statement and thereafter the issues are being framed by the court so the pleadings from the pleadings you can get the information regarding the case of the respective parties and issues help you what are the points the court wants to determine in this case and what are the relevant evidence which the respective parties want to lay and accordingly you can prepare yourself for cross examination but so far the criminal cases are concerned it is more complicated and more difficult one so in order to prepare for cross examination in a criminal case you have to first of all collect the brief brief means if the case is being instituted by on police report you have to collect first the police report itself the police reports consist of the copy of affair 161 statement the 164 statement if any and the uh, seizure list um, expert opinion or expert evidence if any all the things you will study minutely along with if there is any spot map prepared by the investigating officer and you independently while studying you have to keep a note for the said purpose and the note is important to help you at the time of cross examination so for the complaint cases are concerned it consists of two types of complaint one is a private complaint instituted by a private party and another is being instituted by the officials who is who are authorized under law to file the complaint which is otherwise known as prosecution report you have to collect either complaint copy of the complaint petition along with the initial deposition or the statement recorded on section 202 crpc and study it first minutely if it was instituted on prosecution report you have to collect all the relevant papers to prepare yourself by collecting all the papers what you have to do you have to prepare a criminological chain i am eager saying you have to prepare a criminal criminological chain criminological chain i want to say that i have formulated a formula for better consideration that is formula is 5w 1h what is 5w 5w is when where who whom why just i am explaining why the 5w when means when the occurrence took place that means date and time where means the place of occurrence who means who committed that act or omission whom means to whom it was committed why means for what reason that is motive behind for committing that crime and one is means how that is elaborate description how the occurrence originated developed and completed if you will be thorough so far the these aspects are concerned or you will load down these aspects it will give you a clear picture in your mind how the occurrence being originated who are the involved in the crime and how you will proceed in the case after obtaining this things you have to collect the exact charge framed against the accused or the accusation explained i will say charge is being framed in case of offenses tribal under warrant procedure and session trials so far summons and summary trials are concerned accusation 
is being explained to the accused. So you must know what are the accusation or the charge against the accused, and thereafter you will consult with your client thoroughly. You must segregate who are the witnesses, whether the witness is a eyewitness, a circumstantial witness, a seizure witness, a official witness, or an expert witness. Accordingly, you will put questions and derive information regarding the weaknesses, their nature, their conduct, their socio-economic condition, their um, past incidents, education, vocation, all the information if you will collect coupled with why and what for that witness is coming forward on behalf of the opponent party to depose whether there is any hostility or he was otherwise being influenced or he was set up or tutored, you will collect all the information. So far collecting information, it is not easy sometimes because if you will ask something, the client may not properly disclose the facts. So you have to interrogate him on each and every aspect and thereafter collect and note down the antecedent of the witnesses, their weakness, their uh, other aspects. Thereby, you can utilize the said facts which you derive from the your client at the time of cross-examination. Now, the most aspect, important aspect also reveals that you must know the topography of the crime, that is place of occurrence. You have to keep it in your mind, the topography. If possible, my advice is the cross-examiners should visit the place of occurrence to visualize the so location, situation, everything, and get an idea. Thereby, he can cross-examine the witness, whether they can be relied upon or they can be disbelieved, whether there is source of light, whether the light is sufficient, or whether there is any obstruction to witness the occurrence. So this is all these aspects relates to so far the preparation is concerned. Now, if you will prepare yourself in the case, then you will get confidence that you can cross-examine the witnesses. Now, the real aspect is the cross-examination. Cross-examination, as I have said, that it is a art. It can be developed by virtue of your experience and handling of the cases. It cannot be achieved in one day. But from, for the beginners, my advice is before cross-examining a witness, you have to study the file, have a consultation with your client, and set up a plausible and believable plea. That means your defense plea should be set up prior to commencement of the cross-examination. And accordingly, you will try to cross-examine the witnesses and bring materials from their mouth to support your defense plea. Defense plea, we can segregate it into four parts. One is the denial plea. That means deny the involvement of your client. This is the easiest and most acceptable plea ordinarily in a criminal trial. The three other pleas are a little bit of difficult plea, and they those pleas are plea of alibi, plea of right to private defense, and plea of insanity. All the latter three pleas, if you will take during course of cross-examination, then the sometimes the ownership to you to substantiate those pleas. So if the case relates that a plea is existing or there is any hint or your client gives any instruction, then accordingly you modulate your plea and take up a definite plea. If you are taking a definite plea during course of your cross-examination, but subsequently, subsequently, you want to change a plea, invariably do not change your plea unless and until there is compelling circumstance. Because prevaricating plea may adverse your client's interest. Now, after the preparation, you have to go to court 
when you will enter inside the court the cross examination will enter inside the court he must remember to carry the notebook which he prepared after studying minutely and collecting information from his client and noting it down in the notebook the complete brief along with the if you are practicing in cross examining a witness from criminal side major act you must carry if you are practicing in the civil side or cross examining the witness in a civil dispute you have to carry cpc along the evidence act these are the requirements and that those are required at the time of necessity during course of cross examination then then it is my advice that a good cross examiner should arrive in the court before commencement of the trial that means before the process is being initiated you must remain present in the court why and what for just i am explaining if you will not remain present and the witness will tender in the witness box by your other side and leave the evidence in presence of your accused you may not follow you may not mark his demeanor you may not study his psychology these are the factors which is necessary for better cross examination so before the witness goes to the witness box you must not only remain present inside the court you must silently watch the moment of that witness that means his gait how he is walking how he is standing in the witness box how he is responding to the oath how he is answering the question being examined the advocate from his side in the examination chief and you also guess what is his mental memory power mental capacity and what type of person that witness belongs accordingly you will formulate the question and attack the witness and make the witness fumble in the dock itself unless you vigilantly watch the witness sometimes you may commit mistakes you may misjudge the witness so for the persons who acquire knowledge practice in number of cases become experienced and senior they may arrive uh, in the court during course of commencement of the trial but the new comers new practitioners or practitioner having little experience or less experience they should be more vigilant while sitting in the court you should be cool and composed never lose your temper at any point of time that may destroy your thinking faculty your sequence memory of framing the questions and you may not you may not put the appropriate question and you may leave the most important question during course of cross examination now while cross examining the witness if you are a new comer or having no sufficient exp uh, experience i have a another advice prepare the questionnaires in your notebook itself in respect of each and every witness so you can put those witnesses or modulate the questions according to the situation and that will help that you will not forget to put any sort of questions out of the questions you prepared beforehand now the most important aspect is during course of cross examination you may expect a particular answer from the mouth of the witness but sometimes it is not possible to derive the required answer from the mouth of the witness so while framing question in your mind or noting down the question you must yourself ask if this question will ask to me what are the probable answer to those questions if one of the angle supports you leave it then and there if other angle is not answer is not supporting you then frame by questions to elicit the truth or the point which goes in favor of your client so by this way you can gather experience and you can able to cross examine the witnesses now so far the psychology of the witness is concerned 
each witness is not reacting in the dark identically they differ there are some witnesses who are not well memorized the fact and situations you can take advantage by testing their memory there are some witnesses who are very witty intelligent if you test the witness by putting some questions and how that the witness is promptly and very intelligently giving answer don't waste your time by putting the questions one after another thereby strengthening the case of the other party simple put some few questions and put the appropriate suggestion according to your plea and leave that witness then and there thinking that you will demolish the evidence of that witness in future by cross examining some other witnesses thereby you can argue the case that that witness who has deposed like a parrot is not a truthful witness in view of the evidence of the other witnesses so the most aspect is sometimes we used to put questions unnecessarily unnecessary or irrelevant question not only irritate the judge or the presiding officer also comes criticism from your opponent side thereby diverting your mind so always try to put the questions which is relevant either fact in issue or the circumstantial fact or the relevant for your plea or you can make it relevant at the subsequent stage and by this process you will save the course time your cross examination will be precise and appreciable now while cross examining sometimes a delicate situation may arise the other side may object your question on the ground that the question is irrelevant not relevant to the case or the court may not record or allow you to put that question on the ground of relevancy in that case please rem the cross examiner should remember the fact that you you should not disclose before the court or the prosecutor that how your answer is relevant because the witness at that time in the witness box and if you will make a discussion elaborate argument on that point the witness will become more witty and he will change his version simple request the court sir i may be permitted to put my questions if it appears to be irrelevant then i will make it relevant later on by putting the subsequent questions by this process by this process you can convince the court even in spite of that the court will not agreeable with your suggestion then request the court permit you to put the relevant questions to the witness and allow the ask the witness to answer that may, be, may not be recorded by the presiding officer but simple note down all your questions with the answer in a memo and requested the court to keep it as a part of the record and it can be util, utilized at the latter stage if the superior court feels that your questions and answers are relevant for the purpose of adjudication of the case now apart from this evidence so far the one of the most difficult aspect in the cross examination so far the criminal trial is concerned that is the expert evidence the opinion of the expert is relevant in view of the section 45 of the indian evidence act now the experts are we can say that doctor sometimes doctors are being called upon to prove the injury report or post mortem post mortem report and there are experts ballistic experts there are handwriting experts there are fingerprint experts dna experts so many experts are available to substantiate or prove a criminal charge by utilizing the opinion of an expert now the question is we the lawyer is not a person who studied any of the science for which a expert is being called upon to depose in that case what shall you do your first and foremost is 
you study that science that means you must collect the elementary books at least to gather some knowledge about that science in respect of which a witness being called upon as a expert to depose and study it if necessary the cross examiner can consult another qualified expert with reference to the opinion and the observation of the expert who who is supposed to give the evidence and collect some information thereby enabling to prepare the questionnaires and put the said expert and demolish his evidence and for that purpose also you must carry the authorities and confirm the authorities and establish that the opinion derived by the witness is not correct according to the authority and you can also demolish his evidence if you will not able to read that science or collect materials or consult with a equally competent expert then the other aspect of a challenge can be achieved if you will establish that that opinion of the expert is not admissible because he has no requisite qualification to be said to be expert or experience gathered by him and his opinion is to be accepted that means you have to challenge the very root that he cannot be designated as an expert and thereby on that line you will prepare the questions and put the witnesses and subsequently at the time of argument it can be availed that a request can be made to the court to act as a expert of experts with the evidence and the report of the expert and adjudicate the matter in this aspect i will say that if you are not so confident so able never try to put any question which he, uh, which answer would be suicidal for your client do not take any chance or risk by putting direct witness to the ocular witnesses who are supposed to witness the incident if you are not so much so confident these are the calls are these questions are called the risk questions and try to avoid all the these questions unless and until you are so experienced by virtue of lapse of time and handling of the cases now in this case in this regard i will say that sometimes a witness is not necessarily to be cross examined the evidence is the is such that it is neither helpful to the party who call upon him nor damage the party for whom a professional is appearing to cross examine in that case sometimes we become over jealous and put questions unnecessarily and sometimes we derive some answers which goes against the client from whom a professional is representing if it is not necessary don't put any question and simply decline that witness if it is necessary to bring certain new facts through the mouth of the that witness only put those questions and derive benefit for your client now i am just giving a illustration from a trial how a senior advocate conducting a murder trial committed a mistake due to his over confidence and bring such a fact on record that ultimately his client was convicted what happened in that case the murder was to place in the night inside a house and husband was murdered and wife is the sole eyewitness and the culprit entered inside the room and killed the deceased the defense lawyer very cunningly put questions and obtain the answer to the effect that the time of incident was night it was a dark hot night night the room doors and windows of the room was closed so there was darkness then after the defense uh, advocate become more confident and in order to give a clean sheet he put a question due to darkness you could not identify who assaulted your husband the witness promptly answered 
sir at the relevant time the lantern was burning and through the light of the lantern i could identify that is the point for conviction you here the cross examiner should remember that prosecution did not brought out the question of light admitted the occurrence took place inside the house in the night time then it is the duty of the prosecution to explain how the witness could able to identify by bringing the light when the prosecution fail the defense patch up the prosecution case and bring committed a blunder in the case thereby leading to conviction now sometimes cross examination is also not necessary if otherwise you will study the case don't do it don't do it otherwise you can establish your case just while i was in my initial practice days attached to my senior we are handling a case very difficult case outside the station and it was a very sensational case relating to murder of a influential political leader the opponent came who are alleged to have were alleged to have been murdered they belongs to a political party which is opponent to the deceased party so we are defending 11 persons there are number of persons and local lawyers who are defending some other persons since it was a political murder they light murder and sensational case both the parties are watching each other and whenever you used to attend the trial court the ocular three eye witnesses they never used to turn up by this process number of dates were allowed and at last what happened one day one day we fell to attend the court and at that time the witnesses deposed and in that case what happened in our absence in presence of the accused the evidence was recorded and subsequently when we approached the trial court session judge he refused to recall the witness for the purpose of cross examination then i studied the evidence of the said witnesses coupled with the medical evidence and go through the judgment clause and i could able to find out two supreme court judgments which indicates that cross examination is not the sole test of comparing the veracity of the witness if otherwise the witness is not believable in comparison to other evidence on record the witness is not worthy to be accepted relying on that decision even if we have not cross examine any of the three eye witnesses the case was ended in acquittal friends those who are young budding lawyers i request you that be courageous be prepared be industrious and be confident you can be a able lawyer if you will follow the few tips which i i have given to you this is not be and all but these are the only hints for you and you will get courage and face and cross examine the witnesses and by virtue of your practice you will become a very good and excellent cross examination in future with thanks i express my gratitude to gyano babu my respected elder brother anubda and also two other persons who are behind and they are linking me with you they are trithankar babu and manas babu who are the technical persons and their technical advice facilitated me to reach at your doorstep i request all of you the viewers be careful we are passing a very delicate time and take care of you and your family and the society thank you all thank you mr mahapatra sir actually when we started the program i was thinking that we will start we will hear the lecture in odia however the cross examination part which was dealt by our learned senior sir mahapatra it could not be it could not be uh, given it could not be said in odia language so henceforth we will try to do it in odia uh, now what i want to say that this lecture series will continue 
for another one month or maybe two months. Now, the lecture series, the which is going to continue for one month, we will uh, invite other legal luminaries to to give lectures in different legal topics. Ebon. मोर कह कथा नेक्स्ट टाइम जिते बड़े कौन से लेक्चर सीरीज कर समस्ते आम मान को स्ट्रेन्थ देते समस्ते यूट्यूब चेल को सब्सक्राइब कर लाइव रे आम लेक्चर सीरीज को देखा समस्त को आम एन देलु नट दैट कि केवल I, I beg apology for uh, the disturbance because of the technical problem. I would like to thank all the persons who have participated in the program. I, my special thanks to Mr. Sarochandra Mahapatra, who is the keynote speaker in today's law lecture. I also thank Mr. Anup Kumar Bose, as Learned Assistant Solicitor General of India, or as I quote, who has given, who has, who has given some ideas about the great personality of our odisha odisha mr dr bipin bipin bihari ratha i also thank all the viewers who have participated in the program and witnessed this such such a such a lecture which is very much necessary for the young lawyers who are practicing special in trial court so i also requested uh, mr mahapatra sir that if there is any question you can answer but i don't see any questions from any quarter if anything wants any clarification or any doubt are there they may post us in our youtube channel in the next program when we will again invite our uh, legal luminary like mr mahapatra we will try to find out the solution thank you waiting for the next lecture jai hind bharat mata ki jai